Hi. Now let's discuss about the functions of bio biological um, materials involved in open heart surgery and some of the medical devices uh, related to artificial hearts and drug eluding stents. So this picture shows a cardiopulmonary bypass uh, during the coronary artery bypass surgery. So this uh, big, uh, picture shows a patient uh, which is undergoing open heart surgery uh, due to the uh, coronary artery uh, vascular disease. And you can see the patient left leg is exposed because uh, to collect harvest uh, uh, softness vein which will be used for this bypass a conduit, so naturally occurring, um, uh, naturally present, present uh, bypass. And also on the right top side, you can see these are a heart-lung machine because this surgery involves the heart to stop and you need to do this anastomosis, so uh, uh, putting together this uh, uh, softness vein as a bypass graft to connect to that part of uh, before the narrowed um, downstream of the narrowed coronary artery to the aorta. And during the time, the patient's heart and lung function is now uh, uh, taken by this uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. So that's an open heart surgery. This is a major surgery because we have to open the the chest and open the rib cage, and uh, so why do we do this? So that's for uh, you already have seen this the same one, and heart lung machine. There's a perfusionist operating a heart lung machine, and uh, these are the statistics. And while it's also compared with the other one, so CPB stands for uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. And there's another uh, technique which came uh, later, which is off-pump coronary artery bypass, which is stands for OPCAB. And you can see total cardiopulmonary bypass uh, is get decreasing while off-pump without using uh, external pump to do the coronary artery bypass is uh, increasing. So during the surgery, the patient chest is open to full expose uh, for uh, the heart for operation. So uh, we do need open heart surgery when uh, we need a heart, total heart transplantation or so-called cabbage coronary artery bypass graft. For replacing heart valve, you need to fully open uh, the chest and open heart surgery. So this is uh, quite common for, from even in the middle of 20th centuries to up to date for the surgeons to take care of this. So uh, let's get to, into see a, a little more closer into this cardiopulmonary bypass, which requires a heart lung machine. So what is this CPB? And you can see during the surgery, of uh, the heart, you need to uh, take the function of the heart and accompanying a pulmonary function by use of this extracorporeal um, uh, circulation, which is you see the uh, inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. So those venous blood gets into the ve venous reservoir, and then you have a this oxygenator. And you need a pump to uh, give a pressure uh, to eventually to aorta so that it can uh, uh, push the oxygenated blood into uh, circulation. So this cardiopulmonary bypass is a technique that a form of extracorporeal, which means outside of the body circulation, that temporarily takes over the function of the heart and the lung during our surgery. So this cardiopulmonary bypass is commonly used in especially coronary bypass heart surgery or coronary bypass heart uh, bypass, uh, coronary artery bypass graft. And this is because it's so difficult to operate on the keep beating heart. So you have a, a method to slow down the heartbeat so that you can do operation. So here shows a, the 
heart lung machines. So you have a heart and the blood from central veins uh, and coronary suction. This pump makes the venous reservoir and then you, um, you basically have an oxygenator to give um, the partial pressure of oxygen high and then control the CO2 and using the pump to give back to the aorta. So treated blood return to a patient. However, this technique, as you can imagine from the, uh, our knowledge of biomaterial, you stop the heart, that means some of the blood in the heart uh, may not be flowing. That can cause, poses a risk of uh, blood clotting. Also, these external uh, surface, which uh, is an external biomaterial, in, uh, in contact with the blood, uh, raises a risk of a uh, blood clot. So you can see there are uh, some uh, risks involved with this uh, coronary by cardiopulmonary bypass surgery. So because so this is called as coronary artery bypass graft, so or simply cabbage. So my friend, he said his daddy has undergone this cabbage surgery, and when opens up, the doctor found six places of needs a bypass. So his daddy undergo a six coronary bypass graft. So let's take a look for an example. So there could be a single uh, left um, uh, coronary artery, then you can have this uh, downstream to the aorta some, somewhere here. And if there's a double, in this case, left coronary and right coronary, so you can have a bypass of these two. There's a triple one, even quadruple one, you can see uh, this uh, a number of multiple bypass graft. So cabbage is a surgical procedure to restore normal blood flow to an obstructed coronary artery from, this is caused by arteriosclerosis or atherosclerosis. So this cabbage is usually performed uh, with the heart stopped. So necessitating the use of cardiopulmonary bypass this we call on pump, okay? So, but the problem is uh, th this heart is stopped and there, there is a risk to patients and complexity to the operation. And because of this, there is a potential for release of fatty debris to form blockage or lining on the arterial wall may break during this cavity procedure, especially you have to uh, connect to this aorta aortic war and that results in you know traveling clot which is emboli uh, that can if they go to the uh, you know brain they can cause a neurological damage uh, from stroke so there's a higher risk of stroke and memory issues uh, for the patient who undergo this open heart uh, cabbage surgery so there's another uh, Japanese doctors developed uh, another ways of like beating heart, leave it the beating heart while this is difficult to do surgery, but you can have a suction and grab the heart with the suction and that part of the surgery uh, is temporarily at least uh, not uh, while the heart is beating, that surface can be stationary so that you can do the surgery. This is technically more challenging. However, the, the merit is you can still, you don't have to stop the heart. So, uh, so you don't need this uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. So that's called off-pump coronary artery bypass or beating heart surgery simply. This is a form of also cabbage surgery performed just without cardiopulmonary bypass or heart lung machine as a treatment for coronary artery heart disease. So we can see uh, the, the advantage of this is, um, so if you look at this, uh, you open, it's still open heart surgery, and there's a, uh, this device called a stabilization device with these a suction cup to just attach to the heart, the part of the coronary artery to be, um, to be treated, and then you, you suck and then grab the heart in that part so that the blocked coronary artery, you can have this bypass graft. Of course, this is technically more challenging. However, because we don't use a cardiopulmonary um, uh, uh, 
bypass or heart trunk machine, the reductions of that debris or uh, a clot uh, will uh, become an advantage. So let's look at a little more closer that this stabilization device have a suction cup. You see this air uh, basically suck the heart because the heart surface on that part is grabbed this and stabilized. And uh, during time you can use um, bypass graft uh, with the downstream of the stenosis of the left anterior descending of coronary artery. So that bypass graft goes to this uh, aorta. And so the big advantage potential is a reduction in stroke. So that could be very, very beneficial. So uh, now I want to discuss about, uh, like so far we discussed about the cabbage and um, uh, uh, cardiopulmonary bypass or off pump, uh, off pump coronary artery bypass. While now we want to discuss about, hey, do we always need open heart surgery? Because that's a major surgery with a lot of a, a side effect, of course, and. and so because of that, we developed a, a new ways of uh, treating this without open heart surgery. So that's called percutaneous coronary intervention. So it's not surgery, it's an intervention or angioplasty. Uh, so let's look at, so this is, uh, remember cardiac cath lab has a real-time CT, uh, uh, real-time x-ray. Uh, to give a contrast, you have to inject a um, uh, 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 inject a contrast agent. So during the short amount of time, you can actually see if the vessels are stenosed or are narrowed. So here's I I play a movie here. On the left part, you see this part is narrowed down, while this part is open. So it's a before and after angioplasty which means this narrowed part due to atherosclerosis, you can put a balloon to open, open up and make it pattern. Or you can sometimes put a stent on it. So this tight critical stenosis of the proximal left anterior descending to one of the coronary artery in a patient. So this percutaneous by definition means just uh, you have to uh, go this uh, stent or a catheter through the skin. So that's why we call it percutaneous and we are target is coronary and we are intervening. It's a non-surgery and we are not opening the heart. Procedure used to treat a narrowing of the coronary arteries or we call it as a stenosis of the heart and in coronary artery disease. So the cool thing about this is no need of open heart surgery and you could also put the catheter, not only balloon, with the insertion of stents and or naturally dissolving stents. So then a natural question is, when do we need a cabbage or percutaneous coronary intervention? You know, percutaneous coronary intervention is uh, not a surgery, so it's, uh, it has a lot more safer, and a lot of benefits. But maybe still cabbage could be superior if there's uh, not just simple uh, one or two, but many, many blockages, multiple, maybe cabbage may be superior. Or a patient which has a background diabetes who may suffer from vascular underlying disease, which may have a high risk, then this uh, cabbage might be superior. Okay, so uh, similar one in coronary angiogram. Angiogram means uh, showing this uh, vessel by use of a contrast agent with, uh, uh, with an x-ray. So you can see that you don't see, that means uh, it's a kind of a block. And once it's pattern open, you can actually see this. This is called percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty or coronary angioplasty. And once you put the stent into the coronary artery, this is what you can see, guide wire, catheter, and stent. And let's see about the stent as a biomaterial a little further. So especially I explained in the past that the stent itself gives a mechanical support to open up the coronary. However, the problem is their tissues are already having underlying um, atherosclerosis may uh, come again to uh, to 
leading to wrist stenosis. So by knowing the mechanism, we can put some drug, slowly releasing drug onto the stent so that the drug eluding stent uh, can be more effective to preventing wrist stenosis. So this is a drug eluding stent for angioplasty showing an uh, electron micrograph. So you can see this as a um, uh, scanning electron micro graph and this is the base braid. Braid uh, means uh, this general like you know in, in, in the female uh, hair you can make a braid so this is called base braid and you coat with elastomeric coat. So like recent stents uh, uh, it's likely that the metals are being replaced by degradable polymers and there we put these uh, elastomeric materials then that will self-expand inside the vessel without the need of balloon inflation, which is great. And then you also coat with a drug eluding layer. So the braid provides a core material for mechanical strength. And this elastomeric coating is providing elasticity so that it can self-expand and then stay there. And this drug eluding layer makes a long-term slow release of this drug, which prevents uh, wrist stenosis. So uh, let's summarize our uh, chapter for biomaterials. So biomaterials are a critical part of the design of artificial organs. While we haven't covered the extensive uh, part of the whole biomaterial, I believe we cover the core part and give you some idea what's the most important uh, uh, knowledge in biomaterial and perfect biocompatible material is not yet known, which means still there are problems of the biomaterials. So, however, there are many materials that function inside the body without causing many side effects. Also, it depends not only material such as uh, 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 titanium, which is relatively inert, but also the location of the biomaterial might also matter uh, because some parts, such as inside the eye, uh, there, it's immune privileged side, there aren't many immune cells. Uh, the most common biological response to materials in contact with the blood is coagulation. So this is very, very important. And uh, the, also the most important biological response to implanted material, uh, which do not necessarily contact direct contact in the blood, is the foreign body response, which is our natural immune response to uh, attack and isolate uh, our, uh, the foreign body. So far, permanent artificial heart do not yet exist. And however, there have been important progress made and we can see still there are many progress uh, awaiting for biomedical engineers. And thank you for your attention.